Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Sunday, August 22nd, 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2021. The models are in. The flooding is imminent. Flash flooding is, well, going to be disastrous just east of Wilkes-Barre, including south of Wilkes-Barre, as well as many areas in the Catskill region and southern New York. And that's the big story. New York City has the rainiest hour on historical record ahead of Han Rey rain, landfall. And this happened earlier today. The National Weather Service said Central Park experienced 1.94 inches of rainfall between 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. Saturday night. The most ever recorded in the city in a single hour since the service began tracking it more than 150 years ago. Ho, ho. And that's a boom. Keep calm. It's boom time. Drivers rescued from flooded cars as Henri gives New York City the rainiest hour in history. The first impacts of Henri drop record-breaking rainfall, giving New York City its wettest day in seven years. The wettest hour in recorded history since records began being kept in 150 years. And Central, Jersey, yeah, the New Jersey coast, Got the most, and we predicted that uh, about 48 hours ago. Ho, ho. So that's what's happening in central Jersey, and we'll get to that. Moving inland, Storm Henri drenches the northeast like a beast. And wave heights right before landfall epically went up, and they went from six feet on average after the first intense pump from the storm, and they jumped to over almost 20 feet right before landfall. Pretty insane. Let's block that. Central New Jersey bears the early brunt of Henri as hundreds rescued from flooded homes. We predicted it, proving just how unpredictable Henri has been. Well, we predicted it, so it's not that unpredictable. Uh, watch live, Channel 7 ABC. Tri-state losers. New Jersey bore the brunt of its wrath as tropical storm inundated the central parts of the state with a deluge of rain, causing flooding in several places. Henri weakened to a tropical depression Sunday night, but it could still bring heavy rainfall and flooding across the northeast in New England. So strap up and buckle up. Canberra, Jamesburg, Middlesex County were downright waterlogged under 8.9 inches and 7.69 inches of rain, respectively, as of Sunday morning. A morning of mourning. Eyewitness News Assignment Desk Editor Mark Cludrel spoke uh, to residents in Helmetta whew, who said that he had lived there for 40 years and this is the worst he has ever been seen. The blocks surrounding Railroad Avenue on John Street and Willow Street were being evacuated as $50,000 cars, well, that's a $100,000 car, were floating in the muck and the mire. Hello. How much rain has fallen? Well, shit, ton. Tons of it. Well, it's good to see you guys as well. Holy macaroni. Tracking Henri, drivers rescued from flash floods and power outages re reported in New Jersey. Yes, they were reported. Helmetta, New Jersey, CBS New York is reporting it's dealing with power outages and severe flooding uh, due to Henri. Governor Phil Murphy said that those are the biggest concerns. He reminded residents not to go near any down power lines because of <clears throat> electricity. Now, the good news is that not that many people are out without power, hours of power. But take a look at Rhode Island. Take a look at these numbers. Rhode Island, only 502,000 residents there. 58,000 currently without power. That's 11, 12% of the entire state. And the southern portion, let's just click on it, is completely incapacitated. So where landfall was made, yeah, that is where the destruction is imminent, as, well, should be expected. And here you can see the southern portion of the state. 72,000 people total in that coastal region, over half. I'm talking 70% without power, 42,402. It gets better as you go inland, but still not good tonight. Lights are off. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance as Tennessee flooding leaves 21 people dead, around 20 other missing. This is the biggest flooding event ever recorded in central Tennessee. They, they weren't expecting it. Millions, maybe billions of dollars of loss just in cars and houses alone. 
And thankfully, loss of life has been quite limited. I mean, this is exceptional, but not unprecedented. We, in fact, predicted this four years ago to be occurring worldwide, and now we're seeing it in uh, North America. We said the 500-year flood would become the annual flood. Well, actually, the 100-year flood would be the annual flood. The 500-year flood would be the five-year flood, etc. So in these regions where they have never seen flooding in drainage valleys, we're going to be seeing an uptick in new cases of mud floods worldwide. Henri remains a heavy rain threat. Henri continues to weaken rapidly across the northeast U.S., but remains a heavy rain and flooding threat. A moderate risk of heavy rainfall will continue to lead at, uh, to considerable flash urban and str small stream flooding, along with the potential for widespread minor and isolated moderate to river flooding in portions of Long Island, New England, eastern New York, New Jersey, and northeast Pennsylvania. And we showed you Wilkes-Barre, south, and just uh, east of there, whew, hardest hit with the rain. It is insane in the membrane. Here we are at the National Hurricane Center, Central Pacific Hurricane Center as well. And here we are tracking Henri with uh, sustained winds at 30 miles per hour as of advisory 29, 10, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard. And we'll just give you some of those updates here. Those are the heavy flooding areas we talked about on the state line here in North, the tri-junction of Pennsylvania, North Jersey, and New York. Hello! You are going to be inundated, so keep a close eye on that through the morning. And those were the rain totals for the next 36 hours. So hours of powers of rain falling there. And we have boom time here in the South Sandwich Islands. We've had thousands of quakes above five magnitude and now the fifth quake above seven magnitude downgraded nope still at 7.1 magnitude this is an ongoing event that has not capitulated into the main event we could be looking for an 8.5 potentially 8.7 coming from this region if conditions persist so we'll keep a close eye on that thankfully it's in nowhere land which is relieving stress on all the other faults within hundreds of miles of this region Good news, bad news, Shivalush Volcano, Camp Chakta. Pyroclastic flows are followed by vigorous eruptions and a secondary caldera is building in a cinder cone. Here is the actual Shivalush in the background and a new cinder cone in the foreground. Completely covered and capitulated. So it could be Shivalush 1 and 2. Who knew? Well, we did, that the power was going to go out. So let's talk about Shivalush 1. <laughs> until we're done. Now, a lot of people are wondering why I rhyme and why it's so humorous and funny to watch the channel and why we aren't so serious because we're giving out important scientific information. Well, in case you haven't noticed, the majority of important scientific information warehouses are full of dogma and shite. And the fact that we're giving you the real news, which is, well quite bleak in many instances. We like to soften it up with levity um, to make it appealing to the masses. If you can't handle a few rhymes or a few jokes in the interim, well, then this is not the show for you. So, bye-bye. Shivalush Volcano, Kamchakta. We have puffs and passes to 15,000 feet as the pyroclastic flows and vigorous eruptions continue. Like we said, and there's the new cinder cone forming in the south, just to the south of the main cone. Who knew? We, well, we all know now. It rained for the first time at the summit of Greenland's ice sheet. Many of you have been sending me articles about this, and we're all going to burn up, and, it's, and I'm totally lying to you. Well, the cover-up of problems in the IPCC report by Antero Olila. The IPC's methodology is fundamentally flawed by Ross McKittrick and more. Just proves the point that what I say every day is true. Now, here we are looking at the actual surface mass, mass budget of Greenland as of today or yesterday. And you can see that this reporting is now on this spike, which barely moves south of the multi-decadal average. But what we should glean interest in is that in the entire melt season, there has been 70% 70 70 more ice building than melting. Yet, the mainstream narrative of global warming and we're all burning up, K 
captures um, the multinational corporation media headlines. These two dips made more headlines than any of these upticks. And if you want to know the scientific facts, more ice has been built this winter that negates all of the melting. So this is one of the first melt seasons ever where more ice was gained than was actually melted, perhaps. And we're all schmelted. And I love schmelts. What say you? <sighs> Thank God. Whoa. We finally know the secret of the Geminids asteroid weird comet-like tail, or do we? According to Science Alert, we do. And there's something strange about near-Earth asteroid 3200 Phaethon. It might have ended civilization as we know it at one time in the past. It certainly created some comet myths, but it brightens up as it approaches the sun. We know this, despite not having any reserves of ice that would normally cause this effect. The fact that the mainstream astrophysics society hasn't at all embraced electric universe or magnetic universe theory leads them to this fairy tale scenario where they have to make up more shit uh, to make it fit. Now, the volatility of sodium and carbonaceous chondrites at temperatures consistent with low perihelion asteroids is the garbage in question. When in fact, all they need is an electropotential completely opposite of the solar system it's entering to create the same effects. In fact, electrical discharge effects that would be caused due to a plasma coma forming in a negative environment of the existing one. And so they make up, well, fairy tales, like the paper here that's peer-reviewed and accepted because the rest of the people are just as clueless as the authors. Massive Carl discovered on the Great Barrier Reef. Now we had the leading scientist uh, that is not in the mainstream, but is on the cusp of breakthrough uh, discoveries. Jennifer Marhasi on the show half a dozen times over the last several years. And we were in fact dis discussing parites, these giant, massive, coral structures, and an exceptionally large coral has been discovered off the Great Barrier Reef. It's confirmed by mainstream media, more than 400 years old, nearly two and a half meters wider than any other coral ever measured on the Great Barrier Reef, which adds insult to injury to all the claims that the Great Barrier Reef is dying. In fact, this 400-year coral says, you, I'm still alive and I'm bigger than anything you have ever measured. That's how pathetic you are. And I'm sure Jen Marahasi is doing backflips in her kitchen. Now Gen Z is made of zombies, less educated, more depressed, without values than any other Whew. generation in history, modern history. And it's scary. Rare blue moon of August 2021 rises now. Here's what to expect. Full moon effect. People getting stabbed and people getting enlightened all at the same time. Downloads abound. Please meditate on this night. Go out and look at the sun. Look up. Don't look down. Be the change you want to see. Is this giant hydroponic greenhouse in Kentucky the future of farming? Well, you bet your ass it is. What you're looking at here is a literally... 60 football fields of square footage, the ninth largest building in the entire world, recently constructed in central Kentucky. You getting plucky? I hope this didn't get affected by the flooding because these tomatoes are budding. And it actually produces, wait till you see this number. First of all, we believe that planet Earth is a hidden gem of the, un, of the known universe. Webb tells, Webb is the guy who, who, 
came up with this concept. This guy is awesome. And the facility is App Harvest in Kentucky. It's a $150 million complex, a 60-acre greenhouse, 50 football fields in size that ranked as the ninth largest building in the world when it opened in October 2020. Now, they're growing. Wait till you see this. I hope I still have it highlighted because I won't know how to find it. Look at this. Annually, annually, up to 45 million pounds of tom tomatoes from 720,000 plants. Mind blown. That is a lot of sauce. And if you want more sauce, come to the Crestone Energy Fair this weekend. Saturday, August 28th, Sunday the 29th, I will pre be presenting on the regenerative stage right here, 3.30 to 5, the necessity of permaculture, Diamond, Moriello. I'll be there. Will you be? Hello. Register for the Tiny Homes Tour. <clears throat> and much more. Now, the Crestone Energy Fair is the longest lived alternative energy fair on the planet. It's been going on for 32 years, and they are looking for sponsors. If your business is aligned with these types of, well, mandates, where we hate pollution, we love sustainability, and we like alternative building solutions. If your business aligns to these protocols and you want to become a sponsor and your name will be all over the fair, all you have to do is make a donation. You don't have to be there. So if your business is a sustainable business with earth bags or straw bale or earthship technology or anything, climate batteries, and you want to become a sponsor of the event, all you have to do is make a donation and we'll be happy to research your uh, company and talk you up at the event. You'll get listed in all of the literature at the event immediately. It's not too late. And you will become one of the sponsors of the event. Your name of your company will be right above me while I'm speaking on Sunday from 3.30 to 5 in the regenerative stage which, by the way, is one of the most amazing stages I have ever seen. I was the keynote speaker, speaker last year when it was first erected, and believe me, I felt important because the information I was spewing was quite important. Now, if you want to be important in permaculture, survive and thrive in the future, and do right with your all of your growing needs, whether it be gardening, permaculture, or small-scale farming, get the beam. Links will be below how to get beam. Buy a pound of beam under 20 bucks. Treat an acre or more. And the increase in yield is just 50% in the first year or more. I can't even implore you enough how life-saving this type of inoculant compost is. And yet you'll be one of the first people on the bottom floor of what will be the future of growing, in my opinion, and many others. And we haven't been wrong yet. And we have never been wrong with hemp lucid. 100% lucid guarantee. Now, the Hemp Lucid crew came out here for the last several days, and this weekend was awesome. We paddleboarded. We seed saved. We learned about permaculture guilds and hundreds of other gardening techniques. And we grilled and we cooked. And everyone was, well, satisfied beyond belief. And you could be too if you purchase products from Hemp Lucid. Papers coming out show that CBD prevents the flu from replicating, and it's at basically a cure to all coronavirus. So get the CBD gummies, and we'll link you to those papers if you ask. Get the lotion, because we're now doing experiments over at Hemp Lucid where we think that the CBDA might actually have sun blocking. 
properties and may have some SPF value. But even if it doesn't, the regenerative nature on your skin after the burn prevents the pain after the fact if you'd apply it early. It's that squirrely. And don't even get me started with the Delta 8. Hello. Shut up, Al. Get your hole. We are done with you, man. Record call two days ago. It was 41 here in the morning in August. Keep vomiting your garbage. Yeah. Basically what it is. Hope you got something out of the video. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. In a dystopian world where moving forward, can you imagine how bad the news cycle will get? Will you ever actually get information? Well, if you subscribe to the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, I promise we'll give it to you. And that's a boom to knowledge. Subscribe to the channel now. Become a Patreon and share this video like a hero. Hello. That's a boom. We'll see you at Crestone. Just a few days. Mm-hmm.